Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another live screencast where I'll be using R and R Studio to analyze data I've never seen before. So, um, as usual, the data set comes from the Tidy Tuesday project. It's a wonderful weekly data project in R by the R for Data Science online learning community. So let's see what data we have this week. I thought advanced that it's going to be an Animal Crossing data set. Now, I have to admit, I've never played Animal Crossing. I don't know that much about it. Uh, I've heard uh, some really interesting, vague things about it, about raccoon landlords and, um, and turnip uh, stock uh, crashes. So I'm going to really um, rely on the live screencast and hopefully some comments from people that are, um, that are joining, uh, that hopefully people, as they... Uh, as they join can help um, give me some context, maybe throw out some ideas of things that we can analyze from this Tidy Tuesday data set. So I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to grab this data, see what we can find out. Info about villagers, item, crafting, uh, accessories, we might be doing something with images, we have links, all right, and um, there's review data, okay, there's critic, uh, so we one something like one row per critic. No, this is critic scores, reviews. There's user reviews. There's information on each villager, and there's information on each item. Okay, I hadn't looked at this uh, in advance. So the um. Uh, so yeah. So as I said, as always, um, if you're watching this live, please uh, comment. There's usually about something like a 20 second delay, but I do, uh, I do have an eye on, on the comments as I'm doing my analyses, and I'm really interested to hear ideas from people. So I think let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to pull out this data from the using the Tidy Tuesday R package. Yeah, here it is. I'm going to do new R markdown. And I'm gonna do, let's see, bring in the Tuesday, the Tuesday data, the, this data, so Animal Crossing. Hmm, I only get, this happened before that I only got one data set out, should submit a, um, an issue. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the read CSV lines. I'm also gonna go ahead and, those who watch for a while know that I like to set a custom theme. I'm going to save Animal Crossing, and uh, yeah, I'm going to get rid of the Tuesday data, and now I'm going to work with some of these data sets. All right, so there's information on each villager, there's information on each item. Well, what should we start with? And, and the reviews, I'm actually, let me see. I'm really curious. There's some, ooh, wow, look at all these things. Uh, <laughs> there's villagers, there's items. Um, items looks like a kind of an interesting data set. I wonder, I wonder what, um, what people do with items here. We have, okay, we have categories, they're order, they're orderable, they're, um, let's see, uh, by value. I wonder what's in the recipe. So recipes, recipe eight, recipe apple. Is this like the, do these make up parts of a recipe? Let's see. Bamboo basket, bench, candle holder. They all require bamboo piece, uh, sounds like. Uh, that sounds like then they, they're made up of this. Okay. Um, games ID. Let's actually, yeah, let me take a look at this. This looks like rest. I'm just trying to get like a feel for all the things we have in here. I don't know what game ID is. I assume they were all Animal Crossing, but uh, full character ID. Link, uh, link to the image. The let's see. I'm just looking through here. We can make so we could think we could think of a couple of things we can do with this data. We don't have anything over time. We're not going to be doing graphs or metrics. We could do songs. Uh, we could definitely do um, text analysis where we look at critics and user reviews. Uh, we could try, for example, predicting uh, the grade based on the text. I've done that in a few uh, previous projects. Um, and uh, we could also make an application, like a shiny application that allows someone to explore items, like an interactive, uh, an interactive um, uh, dashboard. Other people, let me see, I could also just, exp I really like the items so far. I've done a lot of text analysis, eh, but text is fun. Text is fun. Okay, 
I'm going to start with the text. All right, so let's do some text um, text analysis. All right, so what I'm going to do is start with our critic data. And looks like we have um, text, moon rising, much like its predecessors. Uh, know that you're overwhelmed with the world. Uh, the grades, I wonder what were the grades that critics gave uh, to Animal Crossing? Mostly, yes, the most common was 90, some hundreds, some 80s, some things, in, some various things in between. Uh, one issue here is I'm not sure I'm going to use, I am then going to use this to predict the grades because like, I guess you could say 90, but who gets a 90 versus an 80 versus 100 based on the text? Yeah, maybe it's interesting. There's not as much of a dynamic range as I might have wanted. I wonder in the, um, I wonder, I'll, let me see, I wonder in the user reviews, also critics only have, Hundred reviews. I'm not going to do any any machine learning on that. Uh, Three thousand reviews is a better distribution. I wonder what the distribution of grades is. What are some of the user reviews? Uh, look at the first six. The limitation of one island per switch, not per cartridge, is nonsensical. Uh, be aware if you have multiple. They cannot. So it looks like yeah, people really like their complaining. Uh, look at this. One island per. Oh wow. They really don't like. Wow, a lot, wait, a lot of people, it's just me or did everybody complain about the number of switches? Isn't that something? That is pretty wild. People really did not like those islands. We need, if you have multiple people that want to play this house, they cannot each have their own account. Wow, all six, six mentioned that? That seems a little odd. Uh, okay, I, I don't know, maybe the, the fans in the in the live stream can tell me uh, what, um, uh, whether maybe that seems like a universal issue. Um, all right, but yeah, let's take, let's take a quick look at our user reviews then. Uh, if I'm using, if I'm doing text analysis, you, uh, people who have been following me a while know that I'll be do, using tidy text. I'll say library tidy text, user reviews, unnest tokens. Uh, word text. So uh, then we can then we can find things like what are the most common. Um, actually, I'm curious about one thing before we do that, which is have the grades been changing over time? I actually missed that we had a date. Uh, so if I said group by library Luber date, if I said group by month equals floor date, uh, I don't know how many months there are here. Date month. That's really handy, the floor date function for summarizing. I'm going to quickly count how many months we have. Not enough. We only have uh, we only have reviews starting in uh, in March. So if I start from week, okay, now we have a couple of weeks. And if I do summarize number of view, number of reviews is n and average grade equals mean grade. Could, um, I'm just I use the number of views because I didn't want to like look at a changing. So it looks like um. This really peaked, actually. The number of, at least the reviews, peaked in late March. Uh, this area was it was around the time the quarantine was really uh, starting up, and I did hear a lot about uh, Animal Crossing in late March. Uh, and interestingly, like, the early reviews were positive, and they got kind of negative, and they got recently positive again. I wouldn't pay too much attention to this this week. It looks like it's. Uh, I mean, this is only like one one day in this week. Uh, uh, seven reviews in this week. Uh, so the um. So yeah, maybe it got unpopular and then got popular again and we could look at some things like what are the words uh, that pop up in those uh, so that's interesting uh, ah, one thing I learned is yes it, it was only released on March 20th so it makes sense that there aren't reviews uh, from that time point uh, okay so I'm gonna start by unnesting the words I like to use uh, it just is really simple to, to remove stock words that come with the tidy text package um, and the uh, stop words being like my and uh, me uh, so then I can then I can ask questions like um, let's see I'm actually gonna add some same review well, actually let me see do the same user ever does the same user ever um, do multiple reviews no uh, so I could just use username uh, I could say username word uh, I could use username things I didn't want I, the story here is I don't want to include necessarily if someone used the same word multiple times. Um, uh, now I have a set of like user review words. I know what I know on this day this user used this word this many times. Uh, so that seems pretty um pretty interesting. Uh, all right. So the um, let's see, did I include the grade? Oh oh, look at me. I did not 
I also need grade because I know they're unique for each of these. Uh, it'll just um, I'll still I'll still get the grade. Yeah, same number of observations, uh, eighty-eight thousand. Uh, and now I have username, date, grade, word. Okay, so now I might be curious, like what are the words that are positive or negatively associated? I've done this in previous things, like um, uh, like a wine rating uh, review. Uh, one, uh, let's see, and uh, if I do group by word. Summarize average grade. This is a simple approach to what is the um, what uh, to how popular is a number of view number, the number of views that use it. Arrange descending and B reviews. I can say how many review. I can say okay the words. Um, what words were associated with what reviews? The word play was was lower uh, grade than average. The word uh, game. Really, we might be interested in um in doing some kind of filter where I'll say filter the NB reviews uh, for for ones that are in at least, I don't know, in at least 50 reviews and then arrange descending average grade. What are the what are the ones with the highest grades, lowest grade? The words like bombing, uh, the um, let's see, the bombing filter string detect, uh, oh I want actually user reviews Text bombing. I just don't, I don't know if bombing is like a term from the game or if it's an I don't know an Australian term for. Oh, okay. People complaining about the quote rating bombing. Uh, so the uh, uh, don't trust people review bombing. Anyone who is negatively ah uh, yeah. So that's actually really interesting. I, I wasn't sure what to do with this. Um, uh, I wasn't sure what, what I was going to do with it, this this review data, but the fact that uh, the fact that there's accusations of review bombing, things like that. Oh, it's it's going to be kind of interesting. We might get it. We might get a little bit of information uh, here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm am going to visualize our um, uh, our ratings over time. Let's see, and we'll say uh, and I'll graph week average grade geom line. Also throw in a uh, I should probably say filter and be reviews greater than I don't know twenty. I need to drop that last week, uh, and I can probably also throw in a geom point with the number of reviews as the size. Uh, that seems to be that's generally helpful. I want to say okay. I'm just telling a story now about the um, animal about the quote review bombing of Animal Crossing, and I want to say like x is time, y is uh, average grade sizes, number of reviews. So this gets across kind of the idea that it's like, oh, there has been an uptick. They're, they're like, uh, it launched and then it really was very low for a while um, and it, it has gone a little back up. But that's not the only story about, uh, the, about the quote review bombing. Uh, the other was that like, there were so many ones and, uh, and zeros. Like I actually, I think that's that in itself is really interesting. So let's actually take a quick look at that. The um, I made that graph earlier, but grade geom histogram. So like most of the reviews, most reviews were very low or very high. So it certainly was not a normal distribution. Uh, we we seeing like uh, uh, we see like these tens and these uh, zeros. Uh, we're very low, we're very high, and, and that's, um, I don't know if that's typical for a game. I don't have data from other uh, reviews, other games. Um, so the, uh, let's see. All right, so um, looking through. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking quickly through the comments to get a little bit of context on this. And um, uh, between these two stories, I'm actually a little bit curious. Here's my... You know, I'm going to add a couple of things. I'm going to say, I'm going to call this by week. And then I'll say, um, av and then I'll say, what was it? P percent zero is, um, is mean grade equals zero. I'm actually kind of curious, like, it's probably going to look really similar, but percent one mean grade is, is one. So mean, so mean recall in R is a nice way to, um, is a nice way to get to turn something into a percentage. 
Aha, yeah, we see a little bit of a little bit of a story of a bombing that dies out here. Uh, where for a bit, yeah, it was for it was like early on there weren't a lot of ones that was zero. Oh, I said one. I meant oops. I said one. I absolutely meant ten. Oh, we're not that interested in one. Uh, okay, and what I could do is like, hmm. I'm just thinking through this. What is going to make this this like kind of interesting? I'm going to call this just no. I'm going to call this zero and ten. I'm just thinking like, have the big grades been getting more polarizing? Is the question that that I'm going to ask. Uh, has the polarization been changing? I could have actually asked with a standard deviation. Should I do that? Should I do that? I'm actually going to, no, I'm going to do this one because um, what I'm going to say is gather the 0 and the 10 in the type value uh, and then graph as a function of weak the value color equals type. I'm going to clean this up. It's not going to look amazing in its first iteration. Ooh, look at that. Um, percentage that are 10 um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to do, I am actually going to do a filter because I don't want, hmm, what day did, so it sounds like it was started, I'm going to do week start is, I'm going to actually say what was the first day, uh, the 20th, okay, then I'm actually going to say week start is, um, All right, um, that's, oh, uh, where, did, I, did I throw in a filter? What is going on here? Weak, this actually looks exactly the opposite of what I, what I wanted. Uh, what did, oh, oh, I see. Weak start is a number. Uh, oops, uh, oops. Weak start if it's like, what I'm trying out is doing, um, uh, is doing week start on one, I don't know, two, see I'm making the, the week start on a different day. I don't even know what five is, but I know that makes it start on the 20th. Uh, and so, still so few reviews on uh, in the March, in the May 1st week that I don't know that it's really meaningful. Like it's it's still a fraction of the, of the rest of them. Maybe I kind of want to make it end on a week Yeah, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to start the week on a Monday, because uh, while that doesn't make the first week complete, it does make the last week complete, uh, and that that means I'm not going to have to throw out data. So what I'll say is um, uh, num is summarized or by week. I don't need a filter anymore, though it doesn't have. And yet now this is sort of the, the pattern that I'm seeing. It's worth noting that the week start can change your results, but I, I don't like throwing out uh, data. So here we go. This is the um, uh, this is the, the review. And then if I say most reviews are very low, very high, I create this and I throw in a scale x, uh, scale y continuous labels equals percent format. Uh, then we can say, hmm, uh, I don't think the fact that they're meeting is particularly mean, is particularly meaningful. Uh, I probably need to expand limits y equals zero. Uh, it looks like basically, um, and I'm also going to do one more thing. I'm going to say type is if else type is PCT zero, then uh, percentage zero, percentage ten, uh, one hundred percentage ten. I don't know if that is clear. Uh, percentage rated zero, percentage rated ten. Eh, maybe a little clearer. Uh, and the story is generally like uh, there. Yeah. So one thing we can see is it looks like there might be a resurgence in kind of a counter bombing. Uh, that it looks like oh early on oh some people rated ten, some people rated zero, and then a lot of people rated it zero for a while. Uh, and then they kind of met back up in the middle. I can still throw in a geom point and do uh, and size as MD reviews uh, and then do labs x is time, y is percentage of reviews, size is total reviews in week. 
All right. So the um. All right. So this is um. So this is looking at it by uh, by week. We see. Oh, okay. There's where the bombing kind the quote review bombing kind of uh, keeps going. We also see kind of an increase in the number of reviews overall, like lots and lots of zeros uh, during this time. Almost half of the reviews were zeros. And then there's kind of a counter bombing popping up here. We're going to check the sentiments uh, to get a feel for that. Something I'm seeing is the word is bunny is in the chats from Kayla Medeiros is bunny day events where April 1st, 12th, so review bombing and bad reviews sort of makes sense. What is a rev bunny day? Somebody tell me what a bunny day is. Put that in the chat. Uh, LTY equals two and say Y inter uh, X intercept is a combination of, I think I have to do as numeric of both the start and end date. Oh, as date, I meant. So if I say 2020-01-04-01-2020-04-12. So like this is the, the, if I want to show like, oh, here's where Bunny Day is. Um, it's an annual special. How could it be an annual special event if the game's only been out since March 20th? Uh, well, it's, so it looks like it was an Easter event. People didn't, a lot of people said it was annoying. People were disrupted by eggs. Yeah, but one thing I'm seeing, ah, yeah, it looks like it kind of, the, the, the bombing might have started the week, the review bombing might have started the week that that was, um, that uh, this started. So I'm actually going to note that in here. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to add in a, um, you know, another way we could have, uh, I'm going to add that in and I'll say like, title is reviews got more polarizing in second few in middle of game. And then you have the revenge of the counter bombers near the end. All right, so that was actually just a quick exploration of things over time. Uh, and I, I want to now return to the things that are, um, uh, let's see, the, yes, I want to return then to the uh, average grades. So some of them are positive sentiment, but also so like, uh, yeah, some of them are positive sentiment, but some of them also have to do with like, there's a review bombing going on. Um, so let's take a look at how we might visualize that. Something I like to do is do, um, uh, I'm actually going to say have to be in at least, really want to include bombing. It's kind of a, of a no-no when it comes to this, these, but I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to say MD reviews, average grade, geom point. Scale x log 10. And now do a geom text. AS label equals um, label equals word. Um, B just is one, H just is one, check overlap is true. I love this graph for saying what are the words that are positively or negatively associated. I missed my second plus. that that second word is animal. Uh, the story that we're seeing that's coming out here is like there are a lot of positive terms. There's also the one like bombing. Um, the ones that are bad are ruined, greedy, money, fix, ridiculous, profile, uh, player, Nintendo Island, Switch, etc. Uh, family. So it, think, so it looks like it really does look like there's a lot of things that are about how greedy they are. Uh, that that is that they allow only one person per account. There's not really like there's not a lot of ambiguity ambiguity uh, in that. The um uh, I'm just thinking about how to um how to visualize this. Uh, the thing I think I'm going to do should I do a lasso regression? I could do a last uh, a last regression. Uh, funny thing is, like, what I, I kind of want to do here. I'm not going to do a word cloud, but you could just literally just do a word cloud of what are common words in zero star reviews and you probably, or, or dis, I guess it's disproportionately zero stars reviews. Yeah, basically I could just take this um, by word summary. I could say, um, I could just say by word filter um, average grade less than two. I wonder how many of those. Uh, and 23 words, and it's like, or I could do top end, I could take the bottom 20 words, 
top end 20 average grade, uh, negative average grade, uh, and say, and only graph those. Uh, so that, that's like one thing I could start with. Uh, I could, again, I could make a, um, a, a ggplot of this. I could do a few, I could do a few things to try getting the like, uh, so like what reviews were associated. I could say, what reviews were associated, what words were associated with low grade review and say something like subtitle 20 mobile reviews there's a few ways i can um i can do this okay so it looks like yeah people are saying they're greedy it's ruined uh it's because my girlfriend can't play my what uh we saw the word white before uh and so on so money bought uh, all right, so I'm actually not seeing like words like egg and but uh, or uh, bunny popping up. I actually do wonder if I looked at uh, if I looked at egg or bunny. If I said filter word is bunny, didn't pop up in enough of these at least. So I'm gonna try 25. I'm gonna try changing this up. Make it 25. Make this 75. This graph that I was making earlier uh, and. Oh, this is actually, I'm saying 25, only the most 25. Uh, 25 reviews, I wonder if I did. No, I'm really not seeing like the word bunny pop up. I don't think it's in the stop words, I wonder. It was only in six reviews. Uh, okay, so that's one thing we can, we can learn. Uh, all right, and um, let me see. All right. Yes. So the um. All right. So yes, yeah, so people are saying that. Uh, yes, yeah, so people are saying Nintendo was greedy. They ruined it, etc. Uh, that's the general uh, sense we're getting from this. I could. This is not controlled. It's not doing. I'm not doing text regression here. Uh, if you want to look at text regression, my, I recommend going to the um the wine ratings one where I predict a rating based on um a weight. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> where I predict. A rating of um, uh, of the, the score of a wine rating based on words in it. The truth is, I think we we are we do understand most of what's coming out of this. Like, oh yeah, it, it's pretty clear that it has to do with people be complaining about the number of islands uh, that are in there. Hopefully, Nintendo Nintendo's working on it. Uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not actually not gonna fit a, a regression model. One thing I um, like a, a lasso. One thing that I am going to do is take a. Um, Let's see, yeah, it because uh, really looks like it's all about the islands, the switches. One thing that I am going to do is look at not by word, user review words. I'm really interested in what words tend to appear together, uh, tend to appear together in the same review, so I can find natural clusters appearing, uh, and that might help us understand in terms of the um, uh, in terms of which are about uh, the review bomb. Uh, might also do ooh, I could actually do topic modeling for this. Should I do topic modeling? Should I do topic modeling? Yes, I'm gonna to try doing topic modeling. All right, so I don't believe I've done topic modeling in one of these reviews before, and honestly, it's been a couple years since I've, I've done um, topic modeling. So I am gonna quickly remind myself how tidying STM models works in the tidy text package. Let's quickly check. Check, 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 check. STM, this, cast sparse, nice, okay. This is new. this is not going to be so bad. All right, what I'm going to do is um, is take our, our review words. I'm going to group by word, filter, and must be take only the words that have at least appear in at least 25 reviews. Looks like it's 600 words. I think it's a, a solid start. And what topic modeling is going to do is going to try some clustering. It's going to say what are the things people talk about. I have a suspicion that if we look at the things people talk about it's going to look like um, people like there is a topic of island Nintendo one uh, that that will be associated with review with um with uh, with negative reviews and with that kind of review bombing uh, so that's what topic modeling does it says there are a few 
groups of words that tend to appear together, and it says what are those groups of words and how and how much are those topics associated with words, how are those topics associated with documents. Because uh, right now we have words and documents, we want to break it down into words and topics, topics and documents. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take our set of words and I'm going to cast sparse into uh, one row for each username, one column for each word, that's a document and then an N for how many times does it appear. That is a word topic matrix. Uh, so I'll say user review, user word uh, or review matrix. I have not had any words that pass this threshold. I don't think that makes it will make a difference in our results. What does this data look like? It looks like a sparse matrix. It's like, oh, how many times did this person use uh, this particular this particular word? Um, all right, so then what I'll do is I'll say, uh, we'll, we'll use STM to perform a structured topic model on this. Uh, so STM uh, is a, um, is, uh, well, I used to use the topic models package, now we use um, STM for, fit, for it's gonna estimate both the documents and, so both the topic, the distribution of topics to documents and of to uh, words to topics at the same time. I'm gonna say, what if I said there are only six topics? Later I can try, actually, I'm gonna say there are only four topics. There, there are gonna be more than four. I just, I'm just like playing around with, I wonder what the, um, uh, the set of, I think my internet is a little bit faster. Uh, so do tell me how the quality is going. Um, that's, on, that's on me for possibly being on the wrong network. Uh, yeah, tell me if it, if it shuts off or anything like that in comments. Uh, okay. Okay, hopefully it's, hopefully it does better. Just was complaining about buffering. Okay, people say it's not been too bad. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do is take our review matrix and say four topics, don't need verbose, uh, and I don't know what init type spectral actually um, refers to within uh, this, but can't hurt. Hmm. And I'm gonna fit our set of reviews. You know, I kind of like it being verbose. I'm gonna have it be verbose. Tells me a little bit how long things are taking. Duration one, two, three, four. Ooh, look at that. It's actually telling me the topics as it goes. Isn't that pretty fun? I think it's pretty fun. Here goes our topic modeling. I really don't think I've done topic modeling yet in any of these screencasts. Uh, yeah. So one of them is game time review. It's game island. Ooh, I bet that's the fourth one. Game island switch play player. I bet that fourth topic is the review bomb. Uh, the positive one, the first one, is Animal Crossing Fun 10 Love. Uh, people must be saying 10 out of 10 right there in the uh, in the rating. I really... Uh, does it really need this many iterations? Can I tell it how many iterations to do? If not, I should probably make it a little faster because I'm probably going to do a couple of, iterate, uh, of uh, different uh, tries at this topic model. Iteration. Max EM it iterations. Uh, I'm just taking a look. Uh, EM, uh, the EM tolerance, I think the story is it needs to get the that number below 10 to the minus 5. It's trying to like the relative uh, change uh, between these. I'm going to turn up the tolerance, I think. That is just, ta is just taking, I might as well let it finish. It's probably going to hit that pretty soon. So this is like a model that's converging. Uh, let's find, let's see. Ah, here it is, it converged. All right, so the story of a topic model is that it prints out like this. Oh, it's four topics, 3,000 documents, a 602 word dictionary. Uh, that doesn't seem too helpful yet. We could take it and actually look at the individual matrices, but my favorite approach is going to be to look at, um, is my favorite approach is going to be to look uh, in the tidy, in the, the tidy text package has a tidy model for these topic models. Ooh, there's a, I need to, um, I need to upgrade my tidy text. I think that it's been upgraded on, on or no, it just doesn't, um, uh, there's a new dplyr. r. Maybe if I install tidy text, it'll, it'll fix it. Um, but just knowing, don't blame um, tidy text. Blame me for having dplyr, the newest version of dplyr. So, I take the um. I, so what the story is here that there's a term, anti, uh, and that is very rare. Like we mean 
basically non-existent across topics one, two, and three, but it is actually moderately common in topic four. Same with the word console, which is very rare in topics one, two, three, real common in topic, uh, with 3% of words in topic four. I bet you topic four is the review bombing one. So how can I visualize this? Well, I could say group by topic. In top N, uh, I want the top three topics, from, um, top three betas from each topic. Uh, and the story is then three, what if I do three when I do six? And then say, I'm gonna graph term, beta, geom, call, I'm gonna flip those two, I'm gonna say beta and term, and I'm gonna fast graph by topic. And we say, what are the most common, to, and say scales equals free y, I think? Yeah, free y. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do real quick is say term is FCT, no, uh, reorder within, which comes to the tidy text package of term by beta, and then say, here it is, reorder term, uh, oh, within a topic. And I, I forgot an extra step where I say scale y reordered. So this is an approach that let me sort each of these terms. Okay, so what this is showing is, uh, for one thing, the Spanish reviews landed in topic three. Um, game for the one that landed on like uh, the island, I need more than one switch, you can only have one player, Nintendo sucks, that kind of thing. Uh, if I make this top 15 or 12, let's try 12, maybe it'll look a little better, yeah. Game, Island, Switch, Play, Player, Nintendo Console, Buy, Experience, 1 out of 10. Yeah, so that's, it looks like there's a negative, a clear negative topic that pulls up. Uh, the review bombing landed in, landed in topic 3, not this one. Uh, all right, so this is like a, um, so this was, was like, it was an, uns, an unsupervised way to try creating clusters of topics that are discussed in these, um, in these reviews. I think 4 is a little small. Uh, I could do this using a varying um, number of topics with a little bit of effort, but I'm not quite going to do that. I'm going to say, let's do it on six, uh, and let's say EM tolerance is is 10 to the minus four. I'm just going to try something. Uh, so I had a question earlier of what are the E step and the M step? The answer is that those stand for expectation and maximization steps. The, um, Without going to the details, topic modeling is an iterative process. You know, that was actually so fast, I can actually, some, while I'm continuing to talk, I'll rerun it with a slightly lower tolerance. So it was just fun to do that. Uh, the story is that um, the is your basically you're first estimating the, the how documents associate with word with pardon me, how topics associate with words, then how documents associate with topics. Documents associated with words, documents associated with topics, back and forth, an E and an M step. I don't know which among the E and the M step is documents associated with words, doc, words associated with topics. It's been too long since I looked at topic models, but that's what this is um, is trying to do. Uh, so that that's this kind of expectation maximization algorithm. Uh, and um, let's see, here we go. Oh, I mean, to do topic model six. I'm now going to take a look at our six-topic model. Where's aha? Now topic four. There's no re there's no reason that one topic is it uh, that one topic is like um, is specific to a, one topic specific, specific to something like the, that. Number four is always um, Island Switch Game Nintendo or anything like that. That's not necessarily true, uh, but it did pop up this way. This it looks like. Four and also five look like they're both about um, this negative reviews. Uh, six and four, just, so six is just describing things in the game. It's kind of like a grab bag of other things, crafting villagers, Tom Nook, the raccoon landlord. Uh, three is where Spanish ended up. Um, de la el juego. Uh, I probably should have removed the stop words in the Spanish reviews, but you'd still get the, these other ones. Um, so the... Um, uh, so I can, so I, right now I'm just randomly picking the um, uh, the number of topics. Some people ask, well, how, how did I choose how many topics? I've kind of just been playing with try this one, try the, try another, try another. There are principled ways to choose the number of topics. I don't think I'm gonna go into them now. It also it's been a little bit of um, uh, 
it's it, it, it's a little bit of an art and also like you can also apply, apply some methods and I don't have just tons of practice in it. Uh, I'm starting just by saying here I've clustered them into a couple of topics. And one thing I try and look for is, is splitting up topics that seem like they're very similar. Here, these to two topics do look similar, though one mentions Nintendo, uh, the other doesn't. Uh, but four and five look like negative ones, one and two look like positive ones, three is Spanish, six is grab bag. That's kind of the, the way I would describe each of these topics. And then um, that's the association of words with topics. I could also have like, if I picked one game, if I want to say, oh, if, pardon me, if I take one term, if I said, oh, the word switch, does that appear in, nope, it's mostly in topic four. Uh, and the word, let's see, progress is really, let's see, it's mostly in topic five, a little in four, a little in, in uh, six. But the um, uh, the story is, yeah, these are the, um, these are two topics that represent people complaining. Now, why, did, why is it useful to, uh, to do topic models? Part of it is because we don't just, we aren't just top tidying the word, to, the word topic matrix. We can also tidy the uh, matrix with topics. Uh, so how, what is the document? Well, if I actually say mutate user, uh, what is it, username, user underscore name? Yeah, username is it's actually a in, a like one, two, three indexes into the row names of the matrix we used. So the mat review matrix. Oh, oh, row names of review matrix indexed by document. That was what I was trying to, trying to look for. So now I've got a username column. Uh, and um, so now we can say, okay, how much is each document associated with a particular username? And that means that for one thing, I could try picking what Documents are so most associated with one particular um, uh, with a particular. I'm actually going to say this is gamma, as tight as topic model gamma. It's a tidied version of the of the gamma topic model. And now, if I take this, I could say group by topic. What are the most associated user, uh, usernames? And I can say top n one by gamma. The story here is that this gamma is going to be like, oh, this document had tw was 23 percent topic one. This document was only 6% topic one. That's the way these get um, divi these get divided down. So here it can say top n, which documents fell into, which uh, documents fell into which topics. And it looks like, for example, document uh, 699 by de Tobi was only, uh, was only about, was basically just topic three, which I think was the Spanish topic. So my guess is it's a short review entirely in Spanish, Reviews four and five. I bet you those are about um, our, our negative reviews about uh, the sw the island switching issue. And now, if I took our um, this join it to user reviews by username, I can actually say, "Aha! I was wrong about the topic three. It wasn't in Spanish. It was. Hold on. Just just remind ourselves for a second. What is each topic? Three. It does include Spanish, but I bet it also includes." the word bombing. Uh, so three, I was in Tyler, yeah. So if I look at the text, here are my six reviews. Uh, the first one, I've had this game since launch, it's been over a month now, Super, it's fun, it's this, uh, etc. it's addictive, uh, I love, so it's the things like, it's just, that's just a positive review. Two is, <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is the message. This is the one associated with two, which is just this is the best game. Stop review bombing it. Uh, that's interesting. And then three. That's a weird one. Stop review bombing with fake words. Wow, this is a whole experience. This uh, this is a whole adventure. Yeah. Okay. No. Yes. Okay. It, it looked like it had some odd parts in. I don't know why it says stop review. I don't know why these words keep popping up here. Maybe it's a scraping issue, because uh, it does include Spanish, and that seems to be the relevant part. Huh. And then this one. 
But yes, it does look, in fact, like this is is item number four because it's just the word one item, one island per console. Wow, we really have our work set out for us uh, in terms of topic modeling. Yeah, this is indeed one island per console repeated over and over. Uh, you usually don't, let me be clear, in te text mining, you usually don't see things like one island per console repeat, repeated over and over. Yeah, this is a topic. So the fact this has the word island and console does make this a classic example of review four. And then five is very similar. It includes, yep, some various kinds of text. Something that's interesting is I bet so there's some repeated text here. I don't know if they just copy pasted it again and again, or if this is some kind of bug, um, but, hmm. Uh, and then, all right, then we have six, which is about some, um, yeah, I think there might be a bug in this. I think there's issues in this scraping, because there's repetition and there's there these various things, yeah. Hmm, worth knowing, like notice the text repeats itself. Uh, ooh, I don't think this person actually did write one island per console again and again. I think that they just, I think the text always repeats itself. Okay, that is really, I should have read a couple of, um, all right, here's the thing. Uh, I should have read a couple reviews. We're going to need to, there, there's a, looks like there's a real scraping issue here. Uh, so I, didn't, I hadn't read some reviews in the first place, or at least not closely enough to see the problems. So let's talk about that for one second with, with regard to our text. Uh, it doesn't make a big difference because until now I haven't looked at how many times the word used. Um, how could I fix it if I wanted to? Uh, the answer is I could look, yeah, here's what I would do. User reviews, user reviews, user reviews. What I would do is, check this out, I would say, uh, if I take my user reviews and I say start text is string sub, no, string sub text 1 to 20, what I get is like, okay, let's get the first 20 characters. Why 20? Yeah, let's make it, make it 30, uh, just to like, um, uh, it actually gonna, I'm, um, I'm going to say either 30 characters or the, the length of it, whichever is shorter. Why am I doing that? Because if something is only 10, if, there, if the thing's only 10 characters long, I don't want to cut it down. Uh, so what I'm doing then is saying, uh, here's a string subset. I'm just kind of hacking this through to, to try and truncate it when it repeats multiple times. And I say, if this starting text appears again in the, in the rest of the string, uh, I'm going to want to do something to it. I'm going to want to... Here we go. One more while I get here. I'm gonna get here. Here we go. Here I am trying to clean this uh, this scraping data. Uh, start text, and now uh, index. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is say string match. I'm trying to remember how. I'm trying to actually remember how this works. Aha. String remove, you know what I can do? Okay, yeah, what I can do is I can actually say string remove from the start text, uh, everything, oh sorry, from text, everything start text onward. So I'm actually using, Uh, what I'm going to say is is any character, and then this is actually going to truncate the last character off of it, which I'm, um, ooh, I know what I'm going to do. String replace. This is actually a little complicated what I'm up to now. What I'm doing is I'm turning this into a regular expression. Case zero. I'm saying, okay, uh, I want to find cases that look like this, and I want to string replace them with just the stuff, the, the one character that comes before. Does that work? Fingers crossed that works. Uh, there, there's a uh, method here where I say string replace this regular expression. Oh, oh, doesn't work. Doesn't work, oh my god, because uh, you can't, I don't think it's vectorized over reg regular expressions, is it? I was gonna do this. Ugh, I need to do a whole thing. I need map to character 
uh, I'm mapping under the text and the regex. String replace with the replacement. Does this work? Can you imagine this works? Wouldn't that be great? That'd be grand. Uh, and Uh, the the backslash backslash um, one means replace with this capturing group. So what comes before here? Uh, so I'm gonna now pull new text. Let's see, does this ever? Oh no, it's too long. Uh, I'm crashing this a little bit. Uh, you know, it looks way better. Yeah, I actually think I'm, at least of the ones I'm looking at here, I'm not seeing text repeat. And uh, I'm actually going to say filter string length new text is not equal to string text. I'm trying to show how I, I, I'm cleaning this data, string length of text, because I just didn't like, uh, I don't like the um, uh, nuts. Nope, it didn't do anything. It did nothing. It did absolutely nothing. What if I just use string remove? You know what I did? I put the word regex in quotes. Anyone else catch that? Nobody commented it. I'm counting on you folks. Actually, I was mostly counting, yeah. Uh, new text, let me see, new text errored, uh, oh, oh, it's not going to work, oh man, oh man, none of this works, I really thought I could, okay, comment this, this is just a complete failure, um, the problem is that there's not, con there's going to be things that don't look like a regular expression in there, I could figure out how to solve it, I don't know how, off the top of my head, so I'm not going to solve, I'm not going to solve that, that's a little annoying, okay, uh, we can't do anything with the repetition. One thing we could do, we could do is um, is treat each um, is treat each word as if it only occurred once. That's not really in the spirit of topic modeling, but it's something that could be done. It just it just it's very frustrating that it's some word, documents look like they have repeated words over and over. Okay, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to spend longer on this. Maybe it's relatively rare, uh, but okay. The um, uh, the main story is here we go we. We, uh, we still have our topic model gamma. All right, that was fun. Take topic model gamma. Oh boy, it's really uh, going a little slower. Let's, um, can I clear my session? Not my workspace, my, oh yeah, here it is. Good, I think that was what was causing the problem. If I interjoin this with our user reviews by username, uh, I've got dates and I've got grades on them. Why is that interesting? I'll show you. Because what if we look at the association between grade and gamma by each topic? Uh, so I can actually say, here we are, topic model gamma. I'm actually going to do this in the join because it's so inter it's so uh, relevant that I'm going to be doing other things with it. How is each topic associated with the positivity of the grade? Um, I'm actually not going to do a scatter plot because there's so many zeros and tens. Uh, I'm instead going to look at the, uh, so the correlation between the gamma and the grade. So group by topic, summarize correlation is core of gamma and grade. So this is across, um, aha, now we see indeed there are positive topics and negative topics. Topic two is very positive, two, one is pretty positive, uh, and topics four and five are highly negative. Uh, the higher the gamma, the more the, um, the more it's so the document associated with that topic, the more, um, uh, the the more negative it, the more negative it is, uh, so the, the the more the lower the, the review is, um, so that that's pretty handy. Is there a way to visualize this? Um, yeah, you could do like, you could say mm, I'm not crazy about it because basically you have something numeric which is the gamma uh, compared to an average rating. It's like I don't know. I just think it's not going to be like a correlation is pretty uh, helpful. I could have said a spearman correlation as well if we suspect. This is not normal, which we definitely suspect it's not normally distributed. A spearing correlation is the correlation of ranks instead of of um 
of the actual values. The numbers aren't that different, uh, except for topic three, um, where now it looks like there's a higher positive association. Hmm. Maybe we should use the Spearman correlation. It doesn't seem that different. And I have a suspicion if this, when if the Spearman correlation is different in one case, that means something. But that, the story is, yeah, we have our positive topics, our negative topics. That's kind of, kind of interesting. And the last thing, let's try looking at how it changes over dates. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll say, let's see, group by week is floor date. I, already, I have that um, group by week done earlier. And I'll group by the week and do we group by the topic? Yeah, topic. And I'll summarize as, well, I can get the average rating, never hurts to get the average grade. Uh, but I'll also say average gamma. Actually, it does hurt because that's the same across topics, not good. Uh, what I'll say is I'll say, what is the average amount of association between this topic, one, two, three, four, etc., and the gamma? So I wonder, as time goes on, does the, uh, do some topics become more common than others? Every topic has some gamma, uh, but if I say color equals factor of topic, I think that they might. So topic five was one of our negative topics, and the um, uh, topic five was increasing and then decreasing. Topic Four was also a negative one, and that's like a really common negative one. Uh, so it looks like topic four is one of the most uh, common overall. Uh, I'm actually going to throw an A. Limits y equals zero. And say average gamma document topic association. It's not just a random association. It's actually saying like on average how, what percentage of the words in this topic, in this document are drawn from the topic. Uh, but... um. That gets the idea across. The idea is that we can actually, once we have a, um, uh, once we have a doc, uh, topic model fit, we can look at like, okay, when did when, like, how has it been changed over time? How is it? Uh, how, and yeah, we can see our four and our five, our negative, our negative topics did rise during that during that time. Uh, we're more, uh, we're. Uh, rep represent a larger set of documents. So that's one thing we can find. Uh, and I wonder, did the did what what went up near the end? Uh, six went up near the end. That was a positive topic, I think. Uh, and two went up near the end, but it also was high. So it's like it started out being mostly topics two and three, and then topic five kind of really showed up. Top and just remind ourselves we're talking about recreating this graph. Uh, which I'm going to add one more thing and say show legend and fill equals factor topic. I just like making this. Um, uh, I like maybe it's a little more colorful. All right, so that was um, was was uh, some text analysis and some uh, topic modeling on. Um, on Animal Crossing reviews. I didn't end up getting to the other uh, thing. So if I hadn't found an interesting story in the Animal Crossing reviews, I definitely would have moved on to some of the other data sets. But I actually think there is really something to here in terms of um, how much is it, how much, what are people talking about, how much are people talking about this, how much is this review bombing about complaining about one issue in the game, uh, and how has that possibly changed over time? I thought there were a few graphs we were able to make that told that story. I think I started with like the, the reviews over time, the fact that it was mostly polarizing, and that that amount of polarization uh, did hit a peak somewhere in the middle. I'm going to remove, looking at the fact that they never really mentioned the bunnies means I'm going to remove this, this graph from it. And, um, yeah, and then I did some some text analysis. I tried cleaning up this repeating text issue, but realized I didn't have a good approach in mind. Uh, and looked at what the negative reviews and saw they're most associated with this. And did topic modeling and found those negative reviews in. Uh, topic modeling can be used as I did subjectively to understand what's discussed. It can also be used as a machine learning method for dimensionality reduction, getting six, uh, turning this high dimensional data set into a six or a ten or a twenty dimensional data set.
Okay, so uh, that's all That's all the time we have. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed getting a sense of the Animal Crossing community and the reviews. I didn't look at the other data sets. I think there's probably a lot of cool things that can be done with the data on the villagers or on the um, uh, looking at the items and how they might relate to each other, how the, what the prices are like. Um, building, uh, but uh, yeah, that, that covers this, um, this data set. Uh, from now on, there's going to be a, um, I plan on having a screencast once every week, so tune in next week at uh, Tuesday at 5 p.m. Uh, I, uh, I hope you had a lot of fun. I certainly did. I'll see you next time.